Good evening. Welcome to the September 5th General City Council meeting, or just a City Council meeting. We're glad you're here. And uh, as we've done since I've been here, we start out with the first 15 minutes for open mic. So if you have, or anybody in the audience would like to come up to the mic and talk to City Council, you're certainly welcome to. And we'd just like to have know who you are. And if nobody wants to do that, we'll continue on the meeting. So I guess there's two ways to look at it. We could have a shorter meeting and not anybody talk. No, just kidding. Yes, sir, go right ahead. Would you just like to have your name, please? Dan Beard. Oh, no, wait, Dan, did you fill out a yep. request? Then we'll get through that. We'll be, that'll oh, be okay. next. Okay. <coughs> that was easier than I thought. So anybody else? Yeah, if you um, have put in to talk or a written request to talk to council, then we'll get that at, at, during the council meeting. So, okay. Then I would like to call this September 5th meeting to order. Uh, is there anyone here for that invocation? If not, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you rise, please? Thank you. Would you call the roll, please? Mayor Troutman? Here. Council Member Smith? Here. Ekstrom? Here. Schumacher? Here. Gill? Here. Weed? Here. Haquez? Yes. And Meisner? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. Now, any citizens who request have written requests to talk to Council, and I think that's Mr. Yeah, this is Dan Beard, 2211 Dan East Main, and wants to talk about dead deer. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, not a big thing, well, maybe 200 pounds, <laughs> and it's only a problem when it's there for seven days after it's reported. Uh, from what I can understand, the basic <coughs> failure was of contacting really anyone other than a trash service to do it who is willing, but never got the PO number to do the job. So, of course, you know, nothing happened. When it was finally picked up, I know they had to use a dump truck, a front end loader, and probably at least four people to do a two man job in a truck, which if the trash company had been authorized, would have done it with a truck and two people for $100. Now, I don't know what that job, the city paid their employees and the equipment costs and everything else, but I would venture to guess it was a heck of a lot more than $100. Uh, not to mention the, the disgusting nature of a dead animal in the summertime that weighs that much. We're not talking a squirrel. Uh, you don't leave that stuff laying around. There's a reason you don't. Uh, my description to somebody and anyone who's ever been in the service, it's like walking into a battlefield that was three days old. Thank you. But no, just okay, would you we? Uh, I was under the impression it was the Department of Wildlife. Tony, what is that true or? Department of Wildlife is responsible for rescuing live animals that just may be hurt. We're responsible for deceased animals. Okay. Each our animal control officer would take care of small animals, raccoons, squirrels, rabbits, things of that nature. Large animals like a deer would generally be taken care of by our streets department. There clearly was some kind of a breakdown in communications for them to take seven days because they're very good about responding, so we apologize for the slow response, but that's generally the protocol. Okay. Now, okay. I do know at some point it was claimed that the deer was in the ditch, which runs along the street, but as some of you have seen, and I made the wager, I'd eat my grungy hat if it was in the ditch. Uh, anyone who has doubts, I'll show them the pictures. It was in the street. Uh, Okay, yeah, we need probably, uh, that was miscommunication, because I know by other times it's been picked up quite a bit quicker than that. Well, so. I only know about the ones that happened near me yeah. within distance. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? That's all we have. All right, thank you. Then we're going to ask for approval of the minutes from the um, April, August 21st, 2017 regular city council meeting. Are there any corrections at this time or discussion? Any corrections?
Believe it or not, no. Thank you, Mr. Meisner. Um, having none, could I have a motion and a second? Mr. Mayor, I'll make the motion that we approve the minutes from the 8-21-2017 regular city council meeting as written. Thank you. I'll second. Mr. Bill, second. Um, would you call a roll, please? Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Okay. Thank you. Are there any council members' announcements at this time? Mr. Nothing. Yeah. There's general government committee meeting tomorrow at 4 o'clock here. Anything else? It'll be exciting. Don't miss it. Do you know what's on the agenda? Yeah. <coughs> Do you want to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I left it in my car. <laughs> it's a it's a, okay. So, yes, we are going to talk about the uh, nuisance ordinance, uh, the um, electric personal assistive oh, mobility devices. Sadly. We'll figure that one out. And uh, <laughs> the one, I think the one that's uh, going to be interesting, uh, really, that might cause some controversy, is. Uh, uh, New right, new law regarding cell phones and texting while driving. Yes. So. Well, there you go. If you'd like to make any comments, you can text us. <laughs> no, I, not while you're driving. So. Okay, anyone else? Okay, then I would like <coughs> to present a um, proclamation to Mrs. Jessica Kobler for her work uh, in September of this year for the National Suicide Prevention Month. And this is a proclamation which I'm going to sign from the city thanking you for your work for this, uh, this great cause. Would you tell us about it a little bit? Um, Could you pull the mic down? Yep. Thank you. My son completed suicide in June of 2014. He was 18 years old. He had just graduated as the valedictorian of Florence High School. Um, he was an amazing kid. He had plans to attend the Colorado School of Mines that fall. We were preparing to send him off to college. Um, we didn't have any idea that he was struggling or that anything was wrong. He seemed to have the world at his fingertips. Had great friends, great family, um, we were a close family, talked. So it was a shock to us as well as to our community. So I'm just trying to continue to be a voice for suicide. And I think it's important that we talk about it and just to open the lines of communication and know that it's okay to talk about suicide and mental health. Are there any events that might be going on that you'd like to tell us about this time? This upcoming Saturday is the first Canyon City Out of the Darkness Community Walk hosted by the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. I'm the chairperson for the walk. It is a fundraising event for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and we have a chapter here in Colorado. Um, the walk registration starts at 9 a.m. at the Reynolds Trailhead of the Arkansas River Walk. Um, you can register online prior to the event at afsp.org slash Canyon City. There's no fee to walk. You can just come and walk and support the cause, but we would like you to register. You can register the day of the event. Like I said, check-in starts at 9 a.m. with the walk to begin at 10 a.m. Okay. Thank you. So I'm getting our condolences for your loss. Thank so you. We'd like to have, could you come up front? I'd like to present this to you personally. Sure. Okay. Would you like to come down? Are you going down? Are you going to read it? I'm so sorry. I guess the council would like me to read it. <laughs> They're testing my reading skills, so. I should have made it bigger. You should have made it bigger. Mayor Point 30. Okay, whereas Canyon City is home to more than 16,000 people, a place of destination for thousands of visitors annually, and the site of about a dozen state correctional facilities, and whereas the Fremont County Coroner reported 22 suicides were investigated in 2016, that's about 4% of all deaths. 
And whereas Fremont County's average number of deaths by suicide typically is 12 to 16 per year, whereas suicides cost Colorado a total of more than $1 billion of combined lifetime medical and work loss in 2010, or on average, $1.2 million per suicide death, according to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And whereas in Colorado, suicide is the first leading cause of death for ages 10 through 14, and is the seventh leading cause of death overall in the state. And whereas five times as many people die by suicide in Colorado annually than from homicide, and whereas the total deaths to suicide reflect a total of 23,267 years of potential life lost before age 65, and whereas an average one person dies by suicide every eight hours in the state. Now therefore I, Preston Troutman, Mayor of the City of Canyon City, do hereby proclaim September 2017 as National Suicide Prevention Month. Okay? So let's try that hey, again. Mr. Mayor, I just want to make a quick comment with um, suicide prevention. That If I remember my numbers right, um, according to the Healthy Kids Colorado survey that's been done, that our kids in high school and um, here in Fremont County, nearly a third of them have feelings of hopelessness and depression for over a week at a time. Um, and a significant number of them do contemplate suicide. So this is a, a very important cause that you're uptaking and, and thank you for bringing this awareness to our county. It's very, very needed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to move for the adoption of the agenda and the consent agenda. Tony, would you review the consent agenda, please? Yes, Mayor and Council. Um, 5A would authorize the city administrator to execute a uh, 15-year agreement with Mobileite, a wireless communications company, a license to use the city's right-of-way to install and maintain, operate their communication facilities. This agreement would be consistent with other like communication systems that have agreements to be in the city's right-of-way. 5B would be to appoint members to the Engagement in Public Arts Committee. I know that um, Rob Smith um, and two other members of the Public Arts Council were interested, and I think you have their names, um, from the staff, Lisa Studs and Christy Gotham, and then I think the two community members that would like to be participating would be Pat Frieda and Judy Gillette. So that would make a good group, and they'll review the applications for the dinosaur art on the 12th of September, and then we'll, they'll recommend to the full council at your meeting. Uh, in the second meeting of September. Um, 5C would award bid number 51-17 to Avalanche Excavating of Canyon City amount not to exceed $134,112.55 to reconstruct the downtown alleys on the 6th and 7th block of Main Street, the south side. And we're thrilled we had budgeted $150,000 for that project, so it's below budget and it's always good to have a Canyon City vendor uh, be awarded this opportunity. Um, 
We also recommend awarding bid number 52-17 to Langston Concrete of Florence, Colorado for various concrete projects as relates to the Centennial Park renovations in an amount not to exceed 60000 Are there any additions or corrections? Yeah, we would ask that you pull item number 13 as it relates to construction standards and cities right away of uh, talking to Ash this morning. I think there were some questions that we could have answered tomorrow during the work session of the General Government Committee that would be more conducive to, uh, for the Council and then we could put this back on the agenda for the second meeting in September. Is that okay? Mr. Meisner? <coughs> Are those two names mentioned anywhere for the Art Council? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're in your memo. memo. Mm -hmm. They're right in the yeah. memo, front page of the memo. First page, 5B. Okay. Because I've seen them in their minutes, but I got it. Yeah. Any other additions or corrections? Could I have a motion and a second? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt the agenda and consent <coughs> agenda. With the exception of number 13, resolution number 21, we'll have that pulled. Second. Second, Frank. Are there any discussions on that motion? Okay. Could you call a roll, please? Councilmember Smith? Aye. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Approved by <coughs> unanimous vote. Could we have the administrator's report, please? Very quick, I'd like to report that to date, and this could change slightly, but we have a 38% response rate for the citizen survey. Uh, that's within 1% of last year, which was one of the highest response rates in the country. So once again, our, it demonstrates the residents of Canyon City have a significant interest in sharing their views and their voice through this process, and we should be getting the results next week. So we'll be thrilled to share them with you. Also, the splash pad uh, is ready for public unveiling, and we've scheduled a grand opening for September 23rd. That's a Saturday at 1 p.m., so be there in your bathing suits. <laughs> also, the, um, if you didn't recognize, right behind you, thanks to the work of Kathy and Billy DeBecker, we have our new city logo. Yes. Looks very nice. Gorgeous. So, nice. Looking sharp. Uh, and then finally, just want to get your <coughs> feedback. We've done an experiment. Some of you have the new proposed mics, shorter, where you can also control the on and off switch versus the other ones. And uh, if you like them, we'll make sure that everyone gets them by the next meeting. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Did Kathy, you don't have a new one, do you? No, they aren't going to let me turn myself off. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I see. Yeah, so um, the splash pad, that's going to be great. Yeah. Lighting everything now. We're thrilled that it was ahead of schedule, so we're able to have the grand opening earlier. And that will be followed within a week or two with the new playground equipment, and then that will be followed by the new restrooms at Centennial Park. So a lot of positive things happening in the community, particularly in Centennial Park, over the next 30 days. How long? Check the weather for that date. It's going to be warm. <laughs> <laughs> It is an election year, so I think the candidates, the new candidates, ought to come in their swimming suits. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree I'm thinking that. that's a rite of passage. <laughs> right. <laughs> it happens every year. I don't want to tell that. So. How long will it remain open then? It won't be open uh, very long because there's some additional, what I co would call cosmetic work to be done on the base of the facility. And, and then, unfortunately, the weather will probably change. <laughs> but. P kids will get to enjoy it th that, that afternoon before we have to go back and do some final touch-up work. Wow. And then the playground equipment, though, that will be installed within several weeks of that, and that will be available 24-7. Wow, that's great. That will be an exci exciting place for our town. Okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, let's move on to number seven, which is an update from Kiewit Infrastructure. Could we have a gentleman representative of Kiewit or Mr. Lancaster or both? Okay. Let these guys make their way up here. So we just wanted to give you a quick update of where we're at with the project. Uh, so I brought in a couple of representatives from Kiwit to give it to you straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, no, 
No offense. Mike McDonald is one of the project managers, and Mike George. Um, and then just, I think, uh, Mike, you're going first, right? Yeah. All right. All you. All right. Thank you. Well, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Good Again, my name is Mike McDonald, and I'm an operations manager for Keywood Infrastructure Company. I'd like to start by saying thank you for this opportunity to build some of your streets this year. You know, Mike's going to give you more of a construction update <coughs> progress on where we are today. But first, I want to commend you and the citizens of Canyon City for taking action and, and approving a tax initiative to fund this program. As you know, the streets, your streets, haven't seen uh, many major repairs in, in decades, and they're just simply beyond their service life. I also want to commend you and the city staff for um, electing to use the design build procurement model for this work. This allowed us to manage our in-house design while getting started on some of the early construction work, including the concrete and the water line. Um, you know, due, due to the varying soil types in the area and then the condition and, and variable thicknesses of the asphalt that's out there now, we had to essentially custom design every street uh, to meet, you know, the, their individual traffic loading requirements. <coughs> this process took a little longer than we had anticipated, but, um, but it's the right thing to do. It was nece necessary. To, uh, to optimize that service life. You know, it's, it's been a pleasure working for Adam and his staff. Uh, Adam is, is very knowledgeable. He is protecting the city's interest. He's very, very tough on <laughs> us, uh, making sure we get this right. You know, I just want to say we look forward to a successful project and hope to build more of your streets, rebuild, more of your streets for, for years to come. So, Mike, Mr. Mayor, some numbers. Can I ask a question? Yes, Mr. Gill. Sure. Sure. What would be now with the streets that you're reconstructing? What would you expect the service life to be on those streets? Uh, 30 years. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's what we've designed the, the structural pavement for. Thank you. Again, uh, I'm Mike George. I'm more of the day-to-day uh, -day operation, so I'd in here, uh, Canyon City every day, working with our, our guys, our subcontractors, Adam Bailey, um, trying to make sure we get, keep things rolling throughout the summer. Um, to this point, we've completed uh, about 4,000 lineal feet of the water line. That's right about 95% complete. We've got a little bit more to do at, at Orchard to, to finish the water line. Other than that, 16th Street and uh, Yale are 100%. Um, our concrete work, so that's our flat work, the new uh, corners, curb and gutter, ADA ramps. We've got about 16,000 square feet of ramps and sidewalk, about 2,000 lineal foot of the curb and gutter throughout the job, and both those are about uh, 45 to 50 percent complete. Um, the drainage work, we've got two crews working full time. Uh, we're going to have three coming up here pretty quick to try to get all the drainage in underneath the road so we can keep getting our, uh, the full depth reclamation process going. Uh, the full depth reclamation, if you see, we've got the uh, the bow mag machine out there and that goes on top of the asphalt and really chews up the asphalt and the base gets it compacted and gets some moisture in there uh, we're up 49 uh, 490,000 square feet complete that's just under 50 percent as well um, paving we're about 180,000 square feet of asphalt on the on the ground uh, Main Street we still have we've got about half of Main Street done but it's, that's the first lift so we got another lift to go on Main Street uh, by the two schools, South and Yale, we got done just just before school started and got them opened up uh, right out in front of the schools, uh, despite the uh, torrential rains we seem to be having <laughs> earlier this summer. We've got about uh, 95 people, given uh, give, give or take, uh, on the job. So throughout the city, we've got about 95 people on our heavier days. Uh, if we're not paving, or uh, we've usually got right around 50 people out there. Um, sometimes up to about 30 trucks with paving operations and removing the excess material off the roadways. Um, we're still planning on being complete right around just after Thanksgiving, right uh, toward the end of the year. Um, and as far as schedule goes, uh, we've got yet this September to finish Yale. Uh, we're really trying to get off Yale. We've been out there uh, in front of those people's houses for, 
for quite a while with the rain and the flat work and all the work we had there. Um, East Main we're still working on. We're going to try and get the rest of East Main uh, right between roads and up to Rainbow. So the other section right out in front of where our office trailers are there. And then Steinmeier, that should be the rest of September. Uh, up through October, we'll have Whipple, Fairview, and Washington. Um, and then throughout November and December, finish up uh, Orchard, Greenwood, and 16th. Um, so like I said, we've been out in front of Yale for a while. Uh, we've got Mariposa uh, tilled up to where it's based now, and we'll get, we'll get paving on that as soon as we can. And try and get minimize the, the area, the, our, really our footprint throughout the job, even though we've been um, out in some of these spots. You know, the people out there have been... Uh, they've had any, every right to really be irritated with us, but everything we've had has been, uh, reception has been great out on Yale where we've been the longest. Um, out on Main Street, guys are really just more curious on the process. Um, we've even had, you know, compliments for, or, uh, you know, with um, people have come through and offered us drinks and dinner as we've been out there for our late nights and kind of feeling sorry for us when we're out there pumping water again out on Yale. But um, everybody's been great. Um, so, like I said, we're trying to minimize the footprint and get done before it gets too cold here this winter. Thank so you. Out. Thank you. So it's Mike and Mike, huh? Yeah, yeah. keeping it easy. <laughs> Mike, Mike, and Adam. Okay. MMA. Well, what? Uh, Mr. Meisner, go right ahead. Um, did we have an issue on Yale? I have to have a dig up there this morning or yesterday or something? There was, uh, from my understanding, by Monroe. North of Yale, there was a water leak that came down through where we were working. I don't know all the details yet, but. Yeah, we, we have a water main that uh, has chosen this construction season to continue to break on the water department, and unfortunately it drains right to, to Yale. But um, some of what you may be seeing also, they're also doing some over digging on some soft spots as well that have nothing to do with that, so maybe that that you're witnessing as well. I seen some digging there this morning with a tracker. Yeah, 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 they're doing some spot treatments on some soft spots there. Um, as Mike McDonald, you know, mentioned, it's pretty much a custom job for each site, um, and so they're going through a, a very meticulous process to make sure they get it right each time. Uh, and there's even a couple occasions where this team is, uh, even after they paved, they weren't satisfied with the final product and on their own without even being asked, removed that product and redid it. So they're doing an excellent bang up job. Um, have you done the second lift on East Main? Um, it's actually three lifts, right, Mike? On, uh, three? on the section we have paved, there's two lifts. There'll be a total of six inches of pavement there. We only have three inches down, so we're still yet, yet to put the final lift in there. Okay. Um, I have some questions yes, as go well. Ahead. Um, how many change orders have been submitted to the city on your projects? Uh, so far, we have zero change orders. We've added a few, had a new items added for drainage or other Adam, items that Adams had that we <sighs> need to need to get done before we put pavement on done. So um, there's been some items that's added for the subgrade treatment, but um, there hasn't been any uh, wholesale changes or actual change orders. Have there been any requests for additional payments made for um, services you didn't anticipate? Um, and, yeah, go ahead. yeah, we have added a fair amount to this job. You remember, we actually added over oh, close to $2 million to this project uh, on the value added based on their price. There's been zero claims by the contractor on this project. Okay. Every, everything that's been added is at the city's request based on the added value or um, things that we see in the field that need to be adjusted at that time. Yeah. And can you tell me again what your um, completion dates that you anticipate now compared to the dates that you anticipated originally? Uh, our original schedule that we submitted, I believe, was uh, earlier in the fall before we added the four streets after we kind of got the job, got negotiated. We added uh, Washington, Fairview, Whipple, and that section of Steinmeier. Once we resubmitted that schedule, we were put, we, our schedule showed December 20th, I believe, and we're tracking right there still, so. Awesome, okay, thank you very much. I'm, I had to be detoured um, coming to City Hall last week, and even though it made me late to my meetings, I was pretty excited that it meant that the street was getting fixed. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, at least you're excited for a good reason then. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. We really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, Adam. Thank you.
Let's move on to number eight. It's ordinance number 24, series 2017. This is a second reading. It's an ordinance repealing and re reenacting chapter 12.12 .12 and repealing 12.20 regarding work and encroachment on city owned property. Would you read by title, please? This is a bill for ordinance number 24, series of 2017, an ordinance amending title 12 of the Canyon City Municipal Code by repealing and reenacting chapter 12.12 and repealing 12.20 regarding work and encroachment on the city property. Could I have a motion and a second from council? Mr. Mayor, Mr. I'll, make, oh, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 24, series of 2017 on second reading. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weed. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Nay. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Nay. Councilmember Jaquez? Aye. Approved by majority vote. Okay, thank you. Number nine is ordinance number 29, uh, series uh, 2017. This is the second reading. This is zone change for 615 Pike. And uh, do we need a motion to table for a later date specific or just table it? Yes, it looks like we need to do date specific till the September 18th. We're still waiting for a le written legal description. So do we need to vote on that or just go ahead and do it till the September 18th? Date Postpone specific. it to the 18th. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move that item, uh, ordinance number 29. We need a motion. Do I should mention that he did close on the property, so M Michael, is the owner of the property okay. now. But, but the question was, do you need a vote? And yes, you yeah. need, a, we vote. need a vote. <laughs> so okay. can, I, can I ask again, why is it um, needing to be postponed? I haven't heard this. Legal description. It's missing a legal description. You know that the two lots you're breaking apart, you have to have a written legal description and yeah. he's only got it on the whole parcel. Okay. So I will need a motion a second to table this issue until the 18th of, the, of September. Is that correct? All right. Mr. Arquez? Yeah, Mayor and Council, I make a motion that we table ordinance number 29 series of 2017 to September the 18th. Second. Ms. Schumacher, second. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Um, I do have a yes. question. I think, Adam Deaver, did you want to <coughs> say something about gotcha. this certain ordinance? And would that, were you okay waiting or would you prefer to talk to us about it today? Mr. Meisner? Well, um, thanks to Autumn, but there's a variety of studies out there that help document the fact that putting one of those developments into a community um, will rarely decrease the values of the existing community. You need to, if, if you've got some concerns about the decrease in, in residential values, when, whenever a development is placed in there, there's a number of studies out there that support that those developments will typically enhance the values of a residential community. Um, I've got that information. If you've got interest in seeing one of those links or reading one of those numerous articles, um, send me an email at my city email address and I will forward those links to you. Yeah, I too have those links too. W was this something we need to talk about when it comes up again on the 18th or do you want to talk about it now? It's council's pleasure. Well, because I just- a motion out there. I just want people to be educated on the whole process because that was one of the concerns <coughs> with that is, is that it would decrease the values of that residential property. I wouldn't mind hearing from Autumn now since she's here. It seems like the audience is pretty void of concerned citizens. Um, so we're only going to table, we're not tabling Autumn, right? Yeah, we're not tabling D discussion Autumn. Discussion should only, since we have I a think. motion and second, Corey should only include council, is that right? You know, at this, the matter, if someone can't be here on the 18th, um, this is still information that council consider, can consider, so I, I think it's appropriate. Yeah. I'm going I'm, I'm to ask you to talk, okay? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so those studies that Jim mentioned, I have actually printed them out. So if you want paper copies, I can give those to you too. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of trees. You, you send me the links. Is that something that could be put on the city website or something like that? Yes, Because I got the that. links too. Yes. And those are just ones that I chose. There are a number of other studies that show 
that a project like this actually will help increase property values. Mm -hmm. um, the studies say an average of 6%. It will not decrease those properties. In okay. this particular situation? Correct, correct. I think then we would ask if we can, uh, Ms. Gotham, to possibly put it on the website. Is my, it su my suggestion would be to have it put on the website after the second reading. Um, you've already had the public hearing on this matter. Yeah, so, okay. um, but it is certainly appropriate to inform the community. But again, I'd wait till after you've completed your quasi-judicial action, which is after second reading. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Autumn. Yep. Thanks. Okay. So that's table. Uh, okay. We have a motion and a second and discussion. And would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Hawkes. Aye. Councilmember Schubacher. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Aye. Councilmember Meisner. Aye. Councilmember Gill. Aye. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. Number 10 is ordinance number 30, series of 2017. This is a second reading as well. A zone co zoning code amendment amending title 17, which is regarding wireless service facilities. Would you read by title, please? This is a bill for ordinance number 30, series of 2017, an ordinance amending title 17 by the addition of a new chapter 17.45 entitled wireless service facilities and amending chapter 17.12 to allow wireless service facilities as a permitted, permitted use in all zone districts. Could I have a motion second from council? Mr. Meisner. Mr. Mayor, council, I move that we approve uh, ordinance number 30, series of 2017, second reading, and the zoning amendment, t amending title 17. Second. Schumacher, second. Any discussions on that motion? None. Uh, call roll, please. Councilmember Meisner. Aye. Councilmember Schumacher. Aye. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Hawkes. Aye. Councilmember Gill. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Oh, good. We got some fun portions here. <laughs> Let's move on to number 11. It's a public hearing for application for a new hotel slash restaurant liquor license for Teak LLC, DBA Teak at 507 Main Street. I'm going to open the public hearing at this time. Could we report from City Clerk? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, members of council. This is Tara Bauer, who is the sole member of the LLC who has filed an application for a new hotel restaurant liquor license at 507 Main Street. Notice of this public hearing was given by posting the premises and also publishing in the local <laughs> newspaper. The applicant wishes to offer alcoholic beverages as a complement to her menu as evidence in support of this application relative to the needs of the neighborhood and desires of the adult inhabitant. A petition has been submitted bearing 100 signatures representing 82 from inside city limits, 15, 16 outside city limits and two was undetermined. Ms. Bowers has stated that she and her staff will attend the training offered by the city that's going to happen on September 28th. Upon review of the applications, we determined that the appropriate state and city forms and fees have been submitted. The diagram of the premises meets the filing requirement. The applicant has possession of the premises through a lease agreement and holds a current sales tax license, both state and city. And the applicant holds a valid food service license, and the company is in good cooperation standing with the Secretary of State. So with that, I'd open up to any questions you may have of Ms. Bauer. OK. Mr. Meisner. Got it. Thank you, Ms. Bauer. Um, are you familiar with Colorado Liquor Code? Yes, sir. Uh, will there be a copy of the Liquor Code on your on file with your establishment? Yes, sir. How many employees do you expect to have? I have roughly 20 to 25 employees, sir. How will they be trained on the liquor code and liquor laws? They will attend the city's tips training. How did you acquire signatures on the petition you, petition you submitted? Um, and did you make contact with residents or business owners in the immediate vicinity of your proposed establishment? If so, what were their responses? Yes, sir. They seem to be very excited. We walked up and down the streets going into the business establishments on Main Street, and we also um, put it out on Facebook that if they wanted to come to sign, they could come to the building and sign also. Are you fully aware that you're responsible for compliance with the Colorado Liquor Code and that any violations of the code may be held against you and or your business and result in suspension or revocation of your liquor license? Yes, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Are there any uh, comments from the audience? Any comments of council? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Reed. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what you're doing? <laughs> it's your opportunity to have a little free television time. Okay. We have a farm to table restaurant in the historic annex building. So we are doing locally sourced food as much as we can from Colorado. If we can get it from the Fremont County area, that's even better. Um, we're using, we're utilizing um, heirloom organic vegetables. Our meat is uh, from a Temple Grandin program. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's an autistic savant vet from Fort Collins that has very, very humane, clean practices on um, the slaughtering of meat. So all of our stuff comes, no antibiotics, no hormones, no feedlots, nothing. So it is completely clean. We try to keep a clean footprint as much as we can. We recycle, we compost, we try to keep everything as local as we can. We even have farm farmers bringing in their organic vegetables in trade for food some days. Um, and we are reviving the historic ballroom upstairs. So we're going to have, uh, we have a couple of companies who are leasing space from me to bring in concerts, to bring in um, receptions and parties and just about anything you can think of that we can do up there to um, give the Fremont County residents and the surrounding area something to do and really showcase our area. So. Well, thank you. Best of luck. And thank you. it sounds like a really exciting venture. It is very exciting. <coughs> Taylor, don't forget, we all need a menu for your file. Okay. Mr. Meister? If we approve this, when does the license take effect? The license won't take effect. She did pay for a concurrent review, which means the state looks at it the same time I look at it since there's a 30-day requirement window for all new licenses. Uh, the state has not called me to say that there was anything missing on her application. However, the state's about two months behind on even processing renewals. So mm. it's, it's in the state's hand at this point in time. If it would have been a transfer, we could have done a uh, I could have issued a temporary, however, with a new license, we have to wait for the state of Colorado. And I just want to reiterate or re-clarify with Corey, relative to the training issue, w that has no impact or authority in this hearing, is that correct? As it relates to a new license, correct. It didn't relate to a renewal last week, either. If there are issues with a renewal. Okay. We didn't bring a That renewal. was a special event. Yeah, it right. was a uh, art gallery permit. Right, that was a gallery permit license. Mm -hmm. So with a new license, because it's a matter of statewide concern and the state doesn't have training as a condition, um, that's the issue. However, the failure to train can certainly always be an aggravating circumstance, even if you mention it at the time of a new license. And if a, new, a licensee doesn't get the training after they are strongly urged to do so, and something does happen, that is a significant aggravating factor. We ate there Wednesday night. It was a pleasure. Thank there you. Were five of us and a youngin, and we passed the plate around. And so everybody had a little bit of everything. I, I, I did. I think my favor was the corned beef rolls. The Reuben rolls. The Reuben rolls. I'm sorry, Reuben rolls. That's. Wonderful. So I would encourage Thank everybody you. to get out there and try. Mashed potatoes are great, too. Thank you. I'm kind of a mashed potato guy anyway. So my wife will attest to that. So <laughs> Thank you. So, And uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Could I have a motion and a second from council? Mr. Mayor and council, I move that we approve the application for a new hotel restaurant liquor licensee, Teak LLC, doing business as Teak 507 Main Street. Second. Thank you. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gill, second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, could you call a roll, please? Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Extra? Aye. Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we're going to go to number 12, ordinance number 20, series 2017. This is the first reading. It's an ordinance amending 
Title 17.30 for signs. I will need three to introduce this. Mr. Gill, Mr. Weed, Mr. Ekstrom, thank you. Would you read by title, please? This is a bill for ordinance number 20, series of 2017, an ordinance repealing and reenacting chapter 17.30 and amending certain provisions of the City of Canyon City's Municipal Code concerning the regulation of signs. Hi. Oh, hello. Good evening. Good evening. So this is a continued public hearing for the Zoning Code Amendment, Title 17, as noted, Chapter 17.3 on signs to revise the city's sign code with respect to First Amendment requirements. This application was city initiated. Um, public notice was published at least 15 days prior to the public hearings as required by law, uh, initially for the July 17th, 2017 council meeting. Um, this item was then continued and brought to a council committee meeting for further discussion. And based on that, the amendments, the final amendments that were requested by council are the red lines that you see in the version that is in your packets uh, that you have in front of you. So basically the information um, primarily that was updated uh, per the city planner's request was to remove any language on flags. So that's been removed as well as some um, purely kind of grammatical uh, amendments. Thank you. Any comments or questions of council? We're not ready to vote yet. Comments and questions. I'm just asking for a question or comments. Uh, Mr. Meisner? My first one is on, on page one of the ordinance, item D. Just to clarify, it makes reference to a home occupation. What is that? A home occupation? So when um, somebody is, uh, has their, their place of commerce or their business based out of their home, it's typically considered a home occupation. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I have one question. I read in here, and this is pretty confusing in parts, the way it's put together, but I saw in here where any signs that are flashing or motion or anything distracting would not be allowed? Um, that, that may be correct. I'm not familiar with every single wording <laughs> in here. Um, can you point out, do you know I where that is? I put a sticky note and then I didn't mark it on the paperwork. Um, prohibited signs on page seven of the red line copy. I just saw it. All signs listed and described below are expressly prohibited in A flashing, intermittently lighted, and signs that are animated with lights or illuminations which flash, move, rotate, blink, and flicker. What will that do to the Chamber of Commerce sign that sits on Highway 50? So but there's a clarifying end to that statement. Signs in conjunction with stacking lanes, no. That you mean like that provided that such signs conform to all of the requirements? Well, it says that they would be confused with traffic signal devices or emergency vehicles? Oh, I'm not reading that. I'm reading electronic message signs in conjunction with stacking lanes in drive through facilities may be allowed oh. by resolution, mm -hmm. provided that such signs conform to all other requirements. I'm not seeing anything about. So, so I think just generally, um, we know that there are a few signs um, that do not comply. This, this is not something, from what I understand, that has changed. Um, again, the primary focus of the, the changes in this ordinance um, is to comply with the su Supreme Court ruling. Um, as mentioned, I think last time this came to council work session, uh, we would like to bring basically an overhaul of the sign code forward um, in the future. So this yes. is for that first step of, of simply complying with the so Supreme Court. So as per Court. se, that one might be just grand, I hate that term grandfathered in, but left until it doesn't work anymore. Correct. Okay. Th that's right, if you look on page 13 of the sign code, there is a provision that's known as non-conforming yes. signs, and that is the what, what is often referred to as grandfathering. Okay. Um, so there, that, that if that sign 
was existing, if, the, if this or, I don't think this language has changed, but if that sign was in existence even at the time of the most recent version of the ordinance that changed related to flashing, so long as it's kept in good repair, it remains non, a okay. legal non-conforming sign. Good enough. Yeah, understand that the, th this is to conform to this, the Supreme Court ruling yeah. about us being blind to content. Precisely. Everything else is there. It was there before. And what Dina is saying is we should probably do this, we should do this, and then do a revamp and look at the whole picture instead of piecemealing it. This is, this is a stop the Band-Aid to conform to federal law. Correct. So. But in the meantime, we, this particular document will still be reinforced, or will be enforced. As it has been in the past. Nothing's changed. Doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> well, that's why we're saying the next step will be to, to revamp it and, and go through it. This is just to make it more in conformance to what the Supreme Court ruling was. And I'm not an attorney, so there. Right? Uh, you, but you're exactly right okay. that this is geared towards not looking at the words on the sign and talking about size and materials. Those are the types of things that the city can regulate as opposed to the words. So that our next step then will be to, do a, to take a look at it in its entirety after this is completed because of everything else was there. So on page 11, 173070, the four foot square limitation, is that existing language? Which one? So actually that may be 17. new language from a few meetings ago. So the, the red line version in your packets, um, in the most recent packets was just the changes from the last council committee meeting. There were more extensive changes that went um, in front of Planning Commission and then that were initially brought to Council, I believe it was the July meeting. And that's my problem, is, is that I think that there are changes in this document that are not strictly related to constitutional rights. There were other physical limitations that were put in there. And we're approving those physical limitations as part of this new document. At this time. At this time. And those were not, in my belief, without researching, part of the pre-existing ordinance. Yeah, I don't have the earlier version with me. I'm happy to run upstairs and, and get it and try to confirm that if you would like to this evening. Corey can't. Uh, let me look in the code book because our review was content, was content only, but let me look at 1730-070. Um, yeah, John, ha I was going to say John Hamrick was at the Planning Commission. The, th there is a change, but I got to tell you that it is to conform with the Constitution because it said, um, except as provided in this section, no signs are permitted. And then it talked about all these types of signs that were content based. So um, it is a way in which we had to come into conformance by. Um, being a little more content neutral in signage in residential areas. The, I, but, but you are, um, so if you go to B1 of our code, it said previously, one sign shall be permitted to be placed in the front yard or in the side yard of a corner lot. No such sign shall be placed within five feet of any lot line or right of way line. And it seems to me that that language is carried through in subsection A of 1730.070. So it is still consistent as it relates to the, the distance, but in, in talking about, for example, it says, signs shall be permitted for churches, nursing homes, and medically related uses or schools, townhouses, bed and breakfasts, and a whole host of things, but there's a United States Supreme Court case that says every residence is entitled to a sign as a matter of right. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to have a real estate sign. I, I realize that, but we've taken that language and that proposed change and, in fact, put in a physical size limitation that was not in the previous ordinance. Yeah, it was. Uh, the let's see. Was. We did have such signs shall not exceed 48 inches in height. Mm -hmm. The size was there. So um, it looks to me to be in 96 
inches in length. So it's changed slightly. I think Dramatically. a real estate sign is bigger than uh, four square feet. I mean, we went from a four by eight to a uh, whatever, whatever square footage that is, 32 square feet. But, it, but again, I think that reflects that the previous version didn't allow signs for your normal single family residence. And so the, the signage allotment, as I understand it, and that was to conform to what a sign would be on a residence. So you're saying the ordinance allowed a sign on a residence, but it gave it a square footage maximum in addition. Was that, was that determined by the Planning Commission, by staff, by Supreme Court? That, that I don't know. I mean, the, I can tell you what the rules for the Supreme Court are, and that is that, for example, in a residentially zoned district, every property gets a sign as a matter of right. I agree. You get to decide size. Um, setbacks, materials, um, and you can't look at what the words are. So for example, in election season, you can have a limitation on the number of signs, but someone could put, if the, if the limit is 10, they could be, put 10 signs that say, shop in Canyon City. They don't have to put a candidate sign or a ballot issue sign. So those are the general Supreme Court rules. Now how that meshed in terms of what staff's input was and what planning commission's input was over time, that I don't know. John, do you know, was there a discussion in Planning Commission about size sign and things like that? Uh, the, the, uh, I don't believe that I can comment on what I heard the Planning Commission because, because we have a record in front of me and for me to keep my version of it without the complete record is, would be is, is, uh, not correct. So I, I can't speak to that. And, and Councilmember Meisner, the 48 and 96 inches in length, it looks like, is carried through on page 12. So on the next page. Yes, 32 square feet. So then is, is paragraph two conflicting with paragraph A? No, they're different. They're, again, they're different types of signs. Right, so the, the what, first what? piece is a sign without a permit yeah. right, I, is I the maximum that. four square feet. The second one with the larger square footage is required to have a permit. And again, that would be consistent with everyone gets a sign as a matter of right, and then any additional signage requires the permit. That makes a little more sense. See, I, the way I understood that, the, everybody gets, we didn't have that in there, so everybody gets a sign by right there was no assignment as to size, so they could have put up a 10 by 10. In an effort to not have that happen, they put a I size agree. on it. I know why it was put in there. And so, so that is, so the one chain created the other change. By we putting have current in, signs that are gonna violate this code in residential districts. They're grandfathered. They're already there. That's right. all grandfathered? That's, They're already there. Yes, that's, yes, that's why I pointed out earlier the section in the ordinance mm -hmm. on page 13, 17.30.090, non-conforming signs. So a sign in existence upon adoption of this ordinance is what's known as a legal non-conforming sign. So long as that sign is kept in good repair, it gets to stay up. And remember, we are reviewing this again. Right. So to, to back up and not to beat this to death, if it's there, it stays. As long as it stays in good repair. I'm okay. We had, and so someone comes in and wants a new sign. Yep, you can have it, but here's a limitation on that. That's all. Two foot. Yeah, yeah a real I think sign. So you can yeah, have I a larger sign, but it needs a permit because. I, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Let's move on. I, th I think the intent was for the allowed or permitted sign within a residential area without a permit, that square footage is the typical sign of a political sign. And so that is the size limit that we was used for that um, sign allowed without a permit. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I have no idea where we are. Do we, do we have a, uh, any other questions or comments from council? Do we have a motion and a second? I'll call for a motion and a second. 
I'll make the motion to approve ordinance number 30 series of 2017 on first reading. Second. Second, Mr. Kedz. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on that motion? Would you call a roll, please? Who was the second? Mr. Hawkins. Sorry, Frank. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Hawkins. Aye. Councilmember Gill. Aye. Councilmember Meisner. Nay. Councilmember Schumacher. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Approved by majority vote. Thank you. Number 13 is the uh, this item, which is approving and adopting revisions to the city's construction standards. The item is going to be removed from agenda and will be discussed at the general government committee meeting tomorrow in this room at 4 o'clock. So let's move on to number 14, health insurance. Could we have a report, uh, the health insurance amendment? Could we report from the city administrator, please? Yes, you recall in the spring, um, um, you approved a proposed change to our health plan. What this resolution would provide for would approval of a voluntary termination of health plan agreement Can't with sanitation you. district effective August 31st. Oh, sorry. So I don't have the new mic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this resolution would approve a voluntary termination. In the spring, you had uh, sought an involuntary termination, so there's a slight change there um, for the sanitation district effective August 31st. Agreement also would entitle the sanitation di district to a pro rata share, approximately 18.6%. That's their number of participants in the health plan uh, on a percentage basis of the city's operating revenue or retained <coughs> earnings, which is one million seventy thousand. So that would equate to $199,000 based upon that pro rata share. Uh, the city will pay out to the sanitation district this $199,000 uh, over a three-year period versus a five-year. And uh, this would be subject to adjustments related to the incurred but not reported claims that will run out largely over the next six months, but potentially it could take a whole year, uh, depending on whether they exceed their 18.6% of our average claims, we would adjust their payments downward. If they're less than that, then we would adjust the, the payments accordingly. So uh, this finalizes the uh, change in our relationship with the sanitation district rel relative to our health plan. Any questions or comments from council? Let's move on to resolution number 22-2017, approving the agreement with the Fremont Sanitation District. Could I have a motion and second from council? Mr. Smith? Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution number 22 of 2017. Second. Second, Mr. Weed. Any discussion on that motion? Would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Smith? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Ekstra? Aye. Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Thank you. Number B is ordinance number 31. This is the first reading of series 2017. It's an ordinance rescinding ordinance number 9 of 2017. I'll need three to introduce that ordinance. Ms. Schumacher, Mr. Gill, Ms. Smith. Uh, would you read by title, please? This is a bill for ordinance number 31 series of 2017 and ordinance rescinding ordinance number nine series of 2017 concerning the termination of the city's current employee benefit plan. Would you, uh, do we need a report from you, Mr. Tony? Or yes, again, the major change here is just the nature of the uh, departure. Uh, it would be voluntary, not involuntary. Um, and again, the payments would be scheduled over three years with necessary adjustments based upon their final claims over the course of the next 12 months. They're already in, engaged in their new plan. It was effective September the 1st, so it's been a good transition. Okay. Thank you. I have kind of a motion and second from council. Mr. Mayor, a motion. I make a motion to approve ordinance number 31 series of 2017 on first reading. Second. Mr. Gill, second. Any discussion on that motion? Would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. 
Approved by unanimous vote. Okay, 15A is a public hearing for the zone change of lot four, Fremont County Family Center PUD. I'm going to go ahead and open up the public hearing at this time. And could we have a staff report, please? Public hearing for the um, zone change for Canella Brothers is the owner and applicant in this case. It is lot four of the Fremont County Family Center PUD. Um, the clerk is now handing out an updated um, survey that correctly <coughs> identifies what the two separate proposed zone districts are. So that is an update from what was in your packets. Um, the current zoning is R1 PUD, and the proposed zoning or requested zoning, I should say, uh, are two components. One is C commercial with a new lot B um, facing on 9th Street, uh, the West subdivision exemption. And then the second component is OPR open space with a new lot A, which is the western um, and larger portion of the site. So this went to Planning Commission. They considered this at the August 15th meeting um, and recommended approval unanimously with a 7-0 vote. Um, this area is near Skyline School. Um, and with the, the subdivision, the intent is to then um, um, donate or transfer the, the land, the OPR piece of the land to the city in the future. Good. Do we have any comments from there? Would the applicant care to make any comments? Would you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, my name is uh, Chris Cornella, and uh, this land was acquired with the idea of uh, a continuation of our current facility, which is located at 2730 North 9th. And the idea behind that is to, once again, redevelop the land so we can uh, add storage facilities to that piece of the property. It was mentioned that uh, 42 acres will be donated back to the city um, to do with what they, what they need. I think uh, right now it's, it's currently going to be used for flood control and drainage. And uh, then I think there was some other stuff that they had uh, hoped to, to, hope to develop with. So uh, I don't know if you have any questions with regards to the land or what's going to be do done with it. Thank you, Chris. Any, any uh, questions from Council? One question, um, not that it really matters, but the, uh, General Commercial, do you have any plans for that, like what you're going to put there or anything? Yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a continuation of our current facility that's on just directly across the street, so it's okay, a storage facility. Okay, so it's going to be storage then? Yes, sir. Okay, I didn't know, you know, General Commercial, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> problem. Maybe a bad question, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from Council? Would there be any conflict if, if there was an addition to having flood control and stormwater um, drainage? If for open space if it was used for recreation purposes? I guess, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Like if, there, if we were to put soccer fields on the, that or other mm -hmm. recreation Would there be facilities? an issue with, the, with what with, we're doing with land? Yeah. No, not at all. Okay. Do we have that option? Yes, the uh, overriding zoning would be for open space for stormwater retention, but you know, as long as there was an impervious surface there, a soccer field, sports field, would be a perfect complement to that kind of space. And that's not constituted as a park? No, because its primary purpose, again, is stormwater retention. So, as, as these gentlemen know, this has been a very difficult property historical because of the problems with stormwater. So it's a perfect utilization for the space. Generally, you know, the periods where it would rain the most would be periods where the, clearly there would be no activity but clearly it was contemplated that we could get a secondary use from this great donation on the part of the Cornellas, 42 <coughs> acres, and that uh, a sports utilization would be perfect and not be in competition with the st underwriting stormwater retention priority of the land. And I think it's also important to note that, you know, this is currently zoned R1 and, and given many of the water issues, drainage issues that happen on this site currently, open space is a much more appropriate use um, than R1. Okay. And that facility that you're on the general commercial that will be fenced? I'm sorry. Will that general commercial that you yes. will have fen be fenced? That's correct. Yes. Okay. I thought so. Yes. 
Okay, any other comments uh, just, of council? Just thank you for your um, donation to the city of this land. I know stormwater is a very number three concern in our community, and this will be helpful to us in addressing those issues. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Are there any comments from the audience at this time? Mm, no. All good. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing and go on to 15B, which is ordinance number 32, series 2017. This is the first reading. I will need three to introduce this. Mr. Arquez, Mr. Weed, Mr. Gill, would you read by title, please? This is a bill for ordinance number 32, series of 2017, and ordinance rezoning certain real property within the city of Canyon City, Colorado, from R1 PUD, low density residential, and a PUD overlay to co C commercial and OPR open space parks and recreation. Thank you. I need a motion and a second from council. Mr. Gill? I would like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 32, series of uh, 2017 on first reading. Second. Second. Mr. Arquez, second. Thank you. Any discussion on that motion? Yeah, I, have, I just have a question Mr. for Weed? Corey. Do, do we need to specifically include the findings of fact from the Planning Commission as justification for the rezoning, or um, is it, are we okay to just go ahead as we have as it, as the motion is presented? You are okay under Chapter 17.40 as it relates to the criteria for rezoning. What's in there is adequate. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Weed. Mr. Meisner. Well, somewhere in this documentation, it mentioned that, that there was community or public benefit from this whole process. And I realize that the OPR portion of this would be donated to the city. Yeah. And I assume that's as part of a condition of the zone request. But then if that land is not substantially different than the land up at Mountain View Park, then I don't see that as being a benefit to the community. Stormwater. Well, there's two benefits. Stormwater. One, stormwater retention. That's a significant benefit. That's the primary benefit to the community. That is a highly um, flooded area historically. That's why it's been such a difficult area to develop. And again, the secondary benefit would be uh, sports fields, but the primary will always be stormwater retention. That's not a very big pond on there. It's 42 acres. Yeah, I know, but the whole pond, the whole oh. area isn't storm retention. Isn't there just a small retention but pond at the corner of that pond? But it's never been city property before. Yeah. If it was, it was just privately It was private. It, yeah. yeah th th so this whole property would serve it, as it can be stormwater retention. It can be further developed that way. Yeah. I mean, Adam is thrilled to get this into his inventory. I think the last time we bought a piece of or we acquired a piece of property for stormwater retention, we had to pay some very large dollars for it. It's true. Yeah, yeah, we're very appreciative the of the Cornella brothers for making this donation. Like it's goodness, a yes. win-win for everybody. But it's clearly a significant public benefit. A public benefit. Okay. Anybody else? Any council member any comments, discussion, motion? Hearing none, seeing none, would you call the roll, please? Council Member Gill? Aye. Council Member Huckes? Aye. Council Member Ekstrom? Aye. Council Member Schumacher? Aye. Council Member Meisner? Aye. Council Member Weed? Aye. Council Member Smith? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're going to open a public hearing again for a minor subdivision plat approval. This is Canyon Reserve Subdivision. This is located at basically 441 Four Mile Lane. I'm opening the public hearing at this time. Could I have the staff report, please? Sure. So this applicant is J.D. Kra and Amy Krause. Again, the address is 441 Four Mile Lane. Um, the representative is Matt Koch with Cornerstone Land Surveying. Um, the current zoning is R-L Rural Living. Um, the property was posted and noticed, um, notice was published at least 15 days prior to the meeting as required by law. Uh, Planning Commission reviewed this application at the August 15th meeting. Um, and recommended approval, approval of the application in a unanimous seven to zero vote. So this is an area um, on the west side of Four Mile um, that's basically one large property currently and there's um, one single family uh, home and some outbuildings on the parcel, um, which is the applicant's home and they're proposing to subdivide into additional lots. Um, the minimum lot size or the range of the lots that are proposed is anywhere from 2.2 to 6 acres. 
of which the, I believe, two acres is the absolute minimum that's required to have a septic system um, which will be utilized and, and required for these lots because it's too far from city services. Okay, thank you. And uh, the, is the applicant here? So there are no comments from the applicant. Any questions from council? How many lots are they going to make? It is four. a total of four lots. So one including the existing home. Um, so on your the graphic in the packet, lot four is where the existing home and outbuildings are. So lots one, two, and three um, are in essence the, the new vacant lots that could be built upon. Do you see it? Yes, Mr. I Meisner? Do. Okay. Any I was questions? just trying to figure out if so it falls under the, f didn't we have a five lot minimum? For a uh, minor subdivision. For something? Five lot. Six. Maximum. This is a minor lot subdivision. So right. It's not subject Less than six, so to five. stormwater okay. fees or cribs and gutters and things like that. Right. Very good. It's in the paperwork. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you get your answer, Mr. Meisner, for Ms. Ms. Smith? I did. It hurt. Do you think it was correct then? I don't question her. I mean, it's in the paperwork. Yes. There under you go. The, if you're asking about the minor subdivision and weather exactions, it's under the staff comments on the second page of the staff report. Uh, I would obviously be a, missed that part. Thank uh, you, Ms. Uh, Smith. Uh, minor reading for a minor subdivision. Okay. Well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing and then move on to resolution number 23, 2017. I'll need a motion and a second. Mr. Mayor, I Mr. will Wade. make a motion to approve resolution number 23, series of 2017. Second. Second, Mr. Schumacher. Mr. Schumacher, any discussion on that motion? Would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Schumacher. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Jaquez? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. We're adjourned. All right. <laughs>